Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is the founder and CEO of Neuroflow, Chris Malaro. How's it going? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Jared. Did you name the company Neuroflow because it li- it rhymed with Malaro? Is that like part of the name? Like, or, I, you know, or, no or one has no one has called me on that, but guilty. You, that's yeah. <laughs> this is what we do. We investigate here. We figure out the truth, and uh, you heard it here. Uh, <laughs> um, really excited to have you on the show, Chris. Thanks, um, so I know, you know, I'm, I'm in the Tampa area. I know you had some ties here with going through uh, Tampa Bay wave in the early days. So, uh, if, uh, if Dr. Uh, Manassi is, uh, is, is checking this out, shout out to him for the sure. mutual connection there. Um, for, for the audience that, that doesn't know you, please give us like a quick bit on your background and then we'll dive into Neuroflow. I'd love to. So I come from the healthcare background. Uh, I come from the to the healthcare world, not as a healthcare professional, not as a physician or really any experience other than being a patient. Um, I went to West Point for my undergrad degree, I have an engineering degree, and then commissioned in the army and served for a number of years as first as a platoon leader, um, and in that experience, deployed overseas to Iraq and led combat missions and everything. And I, I mean talk about an experience where uh, you grow up quickly, uh, you learn how to solve problems because you have to, and uh, and leadership matters. Um, and, and in that world, I, um, you know, you saw the gaps of healthcare. Uh, you know, when we came back home, we were stationed in Texas at the time. We, um, I mean, all of us had, I mean, you're on 365, 24 seven, nonstop. And then you come back home and it's expected to be normal and that's just not normal. And so the, but the, while there were plenty of physical care options and there were mental health care options at this time is 2010 and 11. So the, you know, seven years into the Iraq war, there was a lot of investment that went into the mental health space. What didn't exist was the bridge between the physical and mental health is that they were treated very separately, independently. And what we know is mental health and physical health is just health. Uh, long story short, uh, I had a, f- a few friends and I had a soldier that tragically lost their battles with uh, depression and took their own lives. A um, number of years later, I transitioned out of the military and went to Wharton for my MBA. And that's where I was in a healthcare business class. And I thought, well, someone needs to solve this problem. This isn't just a veteran issue or a military issue. This is a healthcare in general issue. And um, I guess that engineer background in me took over. And um, after Wharton, I went right into Neuroflow uh, with a bioengineering PhD candidate at the time, who's uh, Adam Partis, who's my co-founder. And here we are today. That was six years ago. Wow. What a, what a very interesting pathway to, and I get it. It's been such a pleasure. We Recently, I've talked with a few people that went through West Point and are now entrepreneurs nice. and I mean, I feel like the the training that you get in in school, right, and then with your time in the military, uh, it it moves over to entrepreneurship so so well, right? Being nimble, like having to to think outside the box, having to be super disciplined. So it's it's always really cool to see people come from that background and then go into entrepreneurship because I think it's such a clear uh, fit. And then plus, you took it the next step and you went to Wharton to get the additional business, you know, side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, you're on, you're on fire. You're ready to go at that point. Right. Um, we actually, I don't know if you know him. We had Bruce Cleveland. I don't um, know Bruce. Is he a West Point guy? Uh, I believe so. Uh, yeah. and he wrote the book Traversing the Traction Gap, which if you haven't read it, it's one of my favorite books. I'll make a note um, of that. That's awesome. Yeah. It, basically what stage, you know, what do you need to do at each stage of a startup to, you know, get investment, uh, be potentially acquired to acquire other companies. It kind of walks you through a no BS approach to it. So um, he was at Wildcat Ventures before, but we just talked with him, and it's just kind of wild that uh, you know what are the odds, right? Two two uh, two West Point folks in in a matter of weeks. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I'll have to read. I wish I read that book six years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what he's trying to say. Is like yeah. like that should be like the for for new entrepreneurs especially like read this. Um, yeah. And that's what I did. We had an advisor that made me read that in the early days, and nice. I'm so glad. Um, really cool. So 
you had this, you know, West Point background. You spent some time, uh, you know, actively serving. Thank you for your for your uh, your service. Thanks, Drew. And and then you decided to go to Wharton. You had these, uh, you know, you had a kind of a tragic uh, situation that um, you know didn't affect you directly, but it was someone that you knew, right? And then you decided to start Neuroflow. So talk us through uh, where Neuroflow is at today. I kind of already, you already kind of gave us your why, right? It, it led into yeah. it, but uh, give us kind of the how and what uh, of Neuroflow today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in my personal experience, what it really elucidated for me was the the significant gap in care that existed, right? They, we had soldiers that would be, again, seen by physical care providers, multi-specialty with pain management or primary care. And Maybe they were identified to have PTSD or depression, maybe not, but they would get referred to a therapist or a psychiatrist. You know, they'd get, be given the card with the phone number and then they'd leave the office and no one ever knew like, hey, did you call and make that appointment? Are you getting better? Is it working? Oh, and by the way, depression impacts your physical health too. We know that empirically today. So that tremendous gap in care just leads to worse outcomes uh, in, in the worst case scenario, it leads to loss of life. And um, it leads to overutilization of a system that doesn't, it's such a solvable problem and challenge. It's not solvable in the current state with the shortage of therapists and psychiatrists we have. You can't just send everyone to mental health. And that's where Neuroflow comes into play. What we provide to our healthcare partners, and so we partner with both health systems but typically primary care groups or OBGYN specialists, pain management groups, and uh, health plans with the chronic care management programs, we provide them with the technology infrastructure to better assess their populations, uh, to help them identify underlying behavioral health risks and conditions, then identify the right places that we should send somebody to. Like if you and I both are anxious today, that you might be more anxious than I am or vice versa. So we will need different types of care. So then managing them to the appropriate levels of care. Uh, and we do that today with our systems at, at truly as a partnership. So it's, we're not a point solution. We're not a teletherapy group. So we're not providing care uh, and we're not, they're not inviting them to Neuroflow. In many cases, we're white labeled uh, so that it's the health systems brand. First and foremost, we're helping the systems provide better care. Um, and today we do that with, uh, in all 50 states, with 15 million people on the platform. And, um, you know, it's it's remarkable. Actually, we work a lot with the military now, which is cool for me to get to go back and, you know, support the, the um, organization that led me to this point in the first place. Super cool. And congrats on, on all your success and, and the team uh, thus far. Um, it's it's awesome when you can you can have that success, but you can also have huge social impact right along the way, which is you know what you're building here, what you've built. I can imagine you know this was you know early problem, but but talk us through how Neuroflow is delivering integrated behavioral health care at scale. Right, you've been at this for a few years now. Uh, talk me through that. Absolutely. So I'll make one amendment to your question, which is we're not delivering integrated behavioral health. Our software allows our partners to deliver integrated behavioral health. It's an important differentiation because there's a lot of, you know, I think the healthcare universe today, uh, especially like the enterprises, p- payers and systems are inundated by point solutions, right? Everybody has an app and it, there's a challenge there with a user experience standpoint. It's not integrated. Um, there's a varying degree of privacy and security layers. There's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, negative press today about some of these apps that are direct to consumer that are, have been selling patient identifiable data. And the, in the end, like we're an enterprise company that partners with these systems that the data is protected under HIPAA. So that it belongs to the users. We don't, the way that we make money is we sell a subscription to the health system, to the payer. Um, and ultimately, if you're going to integrate behavioral health care and primary care, let's use that as an example, 
without tech, you could do that without technology. These models have been around for 30 years before se mobile cell phones, before electronic health records were everywhere. Uh, it's just really expensive to do. You need to have a therapist at the location. You need to have a psychiatrist at the location. You need to call people in between visits. Imagine like I have to call every single patient to check in on them, to check in how they're doing. Um, you obviously, you can't do that at scale in a cost-effective way. And so where we're able to plug in our technology is to partner with our systems to make sure that they're capturing everybody. They're able to actually assess everybody that's visiting primary care for depression, anxiety, substance use. And they're not relying on the primary care provider, which, who by the way, has way too many things to do anyway, to then also be concerned with their behavioral health, uh, helping assist them in automating the process of saying, hey, Chris has moderate depression, Jared has mild anxiety, this is where you should send Jared, this is where you should send Chris, and then making sure that handoff process is as seamless as possible. So we take, it's basically a turnkey integration solution so that they can deliver that in a more scalable way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you clarified too. Um, super, super interesting though, that, uh, uh, you've been able to help all these, all these like health systems and do that right. And your part, other partners, can you, can you talk me through a little bit about how technology has enabled, let's, let's go through like better diagnosis and uh, treatment of symptoms for, for the patients that you, you know, for, you know, the patients that are attached to your platform. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so in order to us to want in order to the first step to fixing any problem right mental health or otherwise is identifying the problem that exists uh I, obviously that goes without saying the challenge though is that the identifying behavioral health problems is not standardized and doesn't happen in a regular fashion if you remember the the last time that you went to a primary care provider, maybe they asked you a few questions about like, you know, how many drinks a day do you have? Or have you been having trouble sleeping? Have you been having negative thoughts over the last few weeks? Uh, a nurse may ask you that, um, or they might hand you a clipboard with a paper and pen, and then, you know, you fill that out real quick. Those are what we call mental health assessments. The PHQ-9 is for depression, the GAD-7 is for anxiety. There's a bunch of them. Those are not regularly given. Uh, to patients. Um, it just, they, they don't give them in a consistent way. They don't give them in a, as frequent as you should fashion, because that's, think about it, that's like very burdensome. Uh, what we're able to do is help streamline and automate the way that those assessments are collected and delivered. We're also able to collect a bunch of other type of data that complement those assessments like wearable data, exercise level data, AI algorithms on health record data, all of which get triaged to say, hey, based on this data that we're collecting, you want to take a deeper look at, you know, Sally, who just walked in the clinic because she's complaining about a stomach ache, and that might be true, but she's also showing to be really stressed and depressed right now because of a death in the family that she's had. Like those two things are related. So you're not going to be able to fix her stomach issue without also fixing the depression issue. And so it's, so to answer the question directly, technology is not doing the diagnosis itself, at least not at this point. But what we're doing is we're providing more actionable data and insights to the professionals to say, these are places that you wanna look at uh, in a deeper way to be able to provide those people the right level of care. And I guess, Chris, what's what's next for, for you and, and for Neuroflow that really is exciting you? Oh, man. I mean, there's there's so much on the horizon right now. Um, the, you know, the if there was a, we support 15 million people on the platform today. Uh, I'm proud of that. That might sound like a big number, but there's 7 billion people in this world all of whom at some point in their life have depression or anxiety. Like who doesn't wake up on a Monday when it's raining and is like, I don't want to go to work right now. And, you know, everybody needs a level of support. And so increasing access and engagement and removing those barriers 
is a key component to, I think, us making an impact we want to. Technology is going to be a part of that. It's not the end all be all. Um, and so there's a there's a huge growth horizon on the future. And um, and being a part of that solution is is exciting for us. Um, you know, we've doubled and tripled year over year over the last six years, and we plan to do the same this year. Um, so the and and growing in Florida too, right in the Tampa backyard, I have a number of uh, partners there. So um, you know, we're excited making that impact. Well, I'm really excited to continue to stay in touch with you and and see how you continue to build Neuroflow out. Hopefully, we can have you come back on the podcast again in the near future, and we can dive more into some other topics. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it.